and we are Top International Jet Set Entertainers. Well, we've been involved in this crazy whirlwind that we call show business for about seven years now, isn't that right, Anne? We have, mate, yes. And it all started, well, for Anne anyway, when he was plucked from obscurity by the BBC to present the children's top-rated light entertainment show, Why Don't You? Take a look at this. No, no! Where'd you find a tortoise with no legs? Where you left it? Anyway, Why Don't You came about, really, because I was a bit of a show-off at school. I was in the school choir and I always used to do drama and I was always in nativity plays and things, so my drama teachers put us forward for auditions for TV and stuff, probably just to get me out of their hair, really. And then I done Why Don't You? And after that, that was moderately successful. And then after that, I went into Big and Better Things in Bite of Grove. I first got my part in Bite of Grove because um, when I was younger, I was really interested in drama too. And I rang the BBC and pestered them for an audition and eventually I got one and uh, I got the part. And by the time I joined, I'd already been in it for a year for one series. And um, coming up now is the world famous moment when PJ first meets Duncan. You want to do it like this, man? Bargains, best sellers, and brick a brick a bite a growth. I, I don't believe it. Yes, to give them away. Well, almost. So since then, we became friends, and now we're very good friends, aren't we, mate? Yeah, we are. We are friends for five long years on Bite of Growth. Very long years, but very good years. Very good years. Good years because through that, we got ourselves a, a little record contract, didn't we, mate? We did, we did. And uh, things just went from strength to strength, really, haven't they? So we're actually recording and writing our second album at the moment, which should be out in November. Big thrill. Another good thing about releasing records is that you get to go on TV all the time, don't you? You do, mate. You, you do. do. And a result of being on TV all the time, which people find quite annoying at times, I think, but yeah. uh, we actually got given our own TV show. On the BBC. By the BBC. Fantastic. Called The Ant and Deck Show. And that, that was a real... Uh, it was, was good because they planned a series called The Ant and Deck Show. And he's called Ant and Uncle Deck, so he says, well, we do it. You know, I mean... And yeah. uh, they let us do it. It was fantastic. So because of all that, some people think that we're quite moderately successful, don't they, mate? Yeah. So we want to share with you, yes, you, our top five tips on how to get on in showbiz. <laughs> Number one. Tip one. So first things first, what you've got to do is find something that you're good at, stroke, interested in. And for me, it was the obvious choice of drama and this great world of showbiz. And as Deck realised stamp collecting wouldn't make him rich and famous, he decided to join me. Didn't you, Deck, mate? <laughs> I did, yeah, I did. And also, you need to make, to set you out from the crowd, to make you that little bit special. And uh, as for Deck, basically it's, uh, it's a regional accent. So uh, Deck, show them how it's done. <clears throat> Why I, man? How are the lads? Number two. So, when you found out what you're good at, the best thing to do is practice, practice, practice. And I found the best people to practice with are your family and friends. On the decade. Yeah, yeah. Why? Why I, man? Why I, man? Why I, why I, why I, why I, man? <laughs> That's great, Deck. That's fantastic, Deck. Cheers. Number three. Now, when you find what you're good at and you've got enough to a team, you need someone to manage you. Mm. Now, be very careful because there's a lot of people out there that would love to take advantage of you. So you've got to find yourself a good manager who A, knows the business, B, you get on with, and C, is very, very honest. Yeah, our manager is so honest that uh, actually when we first started, he said that he wouldn't represent me because I was such a bad actor. But Ant was such a professional, it was like water off the duck's back here. But Ant did get better, and, and now he's our manager, and he's, everything's sweet. It's, 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 it's just, excuse me. It's just Number four. So, you've got yourself a manager. You're full of confidence, but things just aren't happening. Well, that's the way it goes, I'm afraid. Things don't happen overnight. Sometimes you've got to be very patient. Where's my tea? Number five. So, you've made it then. You've got the job. You've got thousands of screaming fans, but it doesn't end there. No, you see, you can't rest. You can't slip up on yourself. It's a lot of work, work, work. Work, work, work. From here on in. Time to give a football deck. <laughs> the top five tips. I think, I think that's it, then. I think so. I think I've <clears throat> right, tip six. We're not allowed to do this, but tip six is, if at first you don't succeed, work in a butcher shop. <laughs> <laughs>